Okay, so I am now absolutely beyond over the moon to be joined <laughs> by Mr. Kurt Vile. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, no problem. Keep keep going. I will. I can easily. Uh, um, I start there with a massive compliment <laughs> um, because what I said on my show the other week about your new album was that I can't believe that it exists. And what I mean by that is because there's so much like space for like long intricate bits of music and like time to think in there and all this kind of stuff in this hyper real world i was just like i'm so glad but surprised like wow. when you listen to it you're like oh man i can't believe this is here in the modern world so congratulations wow amazing. thanks man man i could sounds like i could do no wrong at this point thanks not yet but we'll see how we yeah, wait wait for the concert so. yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, you were in Brighton last night. How did that go? It was awesome. It yeah. was fun. Um, I saw on Instagram you snapped some pictures. Yeah, there's a s- sunset. Sunrise, sunset. Was yeah, you on a big night or an early morning or what was going on? It was a, no, it was a sunset. It was a sunset. So that would be an early Freaky. evening. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had a, su- a sunset series, you know, I just kept, kept shooting some sunsets. I say that because my friend, uh, wrote me, you know. A direct message and said, "I'm really loving your sunset series." And I was like, "Oh, good point. I'm doing a lot of sunsets. Thanks for mocking me." <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, with this album that's come out, I've seen that you've said in a lot of places this is your best piece of work. And I've been following your career for a long time. Uh, it's almost like a boyhood dream come true that you've really worked on. Like you've you've opened for Neil Young, you gig with John Prine. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think's left for you? Oh, in your there's plenty left. Sort of I, and I'm not. Dreams. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. But um, there's plenty left, and I always st- my n- my n- latest album is always going to be my best. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be somebody's favorite, or uh, and I'm nostalgic about old ones. They're all like a moment captured. But uh, I always uh, improve myself in some way, or even if even if you don't necessarily improve, even if maybe say like you went dark into your own psyche and made like a kind of a sad record in a way um you know your chops get a little better and uh you get maybe in more introverted or extroverted but you know it's always some in some way it's your best piece of work and yet you know but uh but there's always plenty to do there's always plenty to do i'm gonna keep doing i'm gonna keep making my best record and you always seem to be working you're always like up to something whether it's like the record with courtney barnett or you're perpetually putting out records are always on the road so what what is it in you that makes you want to work that hard like where's this drive come well from? i think honestly basically I want my to career a bit i say this often is but my career has been one s- one step uh, up, up at a time every album so this is like an accumulation of having been around putting records out on labels for 10 years um and i like the idea honestly of not I like the idea. One day I'm going. I'm kind of working up to a place where I can disappear for a year. You know, maybe not leave Philadelphia for a year. It's been so long since I did that, and then I'll go out again. But um, I just think um, now is the time to just keep running and running. And uh, every time I get a little, get to have more sizable breaks. And uh, but I and, and and little tricks I learned along the way, like um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not going to tour a record for two years and not record, uh, uh you know a note and start a record from scratch at the end of touring anymore. And so that's sort of the reason I'm I'm able to churn things out. Because you're I always I do get a little older. I get older a little more tired. So, like, I, kn- I have the foresight to know that I can't tour this record or the last record for two years without recording in between where I can, you know, for potential other records. And I've, uh, like, kind of accumulated a bunch of recordings at this point and stuff that hasn't come out. So I, I kind of... It's kind of almost like where I was with Constant Hitmaker, where when I put that, a- that was my first record, mm-hmm. when I put that out, it was like a collection of my best recordings. I kind of have, I'm kind of there again where I have these recordings. I could kind of sit back and do that again. And then one day I'm just going to disappear, but I'll be back. Yep. Yeah. Away <laughs> and back, like a sort of yeah. superhero so or supervillain in back. the night is back. <laughs> um, and so uh, being back in London, is there, when you come to London, is there anything that makes you think, a certain way about what the gig's going to be like. Have you got any preconceptions of a British um, audience? Are you honestly, I have pre, I have anxieties about a, br- a, a London audi- audience right. in particular because it's like New York or wherever. I've always built it up, but um, I can officially say that I know tonight we'll have a professionally delivered show, and I don't think I'm going to 
uh, we're pretty oiled up, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be our best London show so far. We have an awesome sound guy in the band. We're like all, you know, we're we're very much one. We're very much, you know, I'm not going to go too get stuck in my head. Everything's sounding good, so yeah, it's gonna. I'm not. I'm not too worried about this show. And you say about like maybe getting not trying to not get too stuck in your head or whatever. How do you generally prepare like in say the hour before you go on stage? Is there anything that you do mm, to get you out of that? No, or you I just no like set thing. But I'll. I, I like to at least have a guitar if if I'm anxious about playing a new song or something. Just get in the zone in some way. Um, but no set routine at this point. But I, I just think in the past it took me a while. Just sort of like I said, one step at a time. It, I, it took me a while to not get stuck in my head out there. Like, if I'm having a bad show, it's hard to hide it. You know? It still would be, I guess, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty cocky. Like, uh, just the right amount of cocky right just now. Just the right amount of yeah. cocky. Yeah. But you haven't, like, tipped over into sort of, like, diva, prima donna mode. No, well, you know, I would. Uh, maybe I would if I was playing arenas or something. <laughs> but, you know, we're playing uh, just two nights at Shea Boo. Shea Boo, yeah. That's, that's what it. they call it. That is what they call it. That's right. He's yeah. learning fast. And uh, on your day off tomorrow, are you going to get to do anything cool around London or have you got work to do I I'm going to definitely uh, sleep in we got a hotel we've been on a bus which is nice of course but it's nice when you get in a hotel for a second because it's nice just to be playing the same place uh -huh. two nights in a row what will you do when you get to the end of touring and you go home other than obviously see your wife and your kids mm -hmm. um, apart from pick up your guitar which you perpetually seem to be doing how do you like to relax like what would you do on like your first day uh, off at home I've been chilling out a lot at home. I'll, I'll, I moved to a house near next to the. Wo it's in the city, but I'm still next to the woods. So I have mm -hmm. like a sunroom that I could just look. Up that I'm just surrounded by green. I listen to records. Um, or honestly, I like to just watch TV. <laughs> like I like what to just chill thing? out. Uh, like trash or TV, like what? Yeah, sometimes trash. I like. I get obsessed with certain uh, act comedy actors and watch. TV shows over and over, TV shows that are usually people had watched years ago. I'm only just getting into TV. That's what I do now <laughs> to chill out at night. I haven't watched, I don't know, things like that. that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like as little as possible. I'm going to sit around. and Yeah. So pe get people to I got guitars there. all over my walls and keyboards everywhere. I'll just play here and there or not. It's my choice. And then I'll well, just watch watching Chevy TV. Chase in a film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and that's something that I wanted to also bring up. Like, I feel like you, more than a lot of people, manage to get quite a lot of humour into your music, especially like through like little bits of wordplay and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, uh, are you? Is that something that you're secretly quite interested in comedy? Like well, do you watch I I like to be funny. My me and my uh, bandmates or whoever I'm with, you know, that's definitely part. I think that's a big part of music, part of being on tour. Uh, even before I was on tour, that was the thing to do. Is uh, you know sort of American stoner type of humor, humor, whether or not you're actually getting stoned. That's kind of the, where I, the world I'm, f I'm from. Uh -huh. And it's uh, often fruitful. <laughs> 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 I don't know. But, it, it yeah, it's just fun, fun to uh, – I mean, if you can't joke around – you sh you know we're totally but screwed. it's nice to see it in a bit of a record as like do you yeah. know, I mean just little tiny because it's yeah, so hard things. to get that line right between little thing. being a comedy musician which you definitely aren't and dropping in just every yeah. now and again a subtle little line which is great yeah and something that it's just uh, I'll try to get my personality in there yeah and make people laugh yeah you know when you have a sad song sometimes they just got to be sad you know I can't if I had a song about my fr a fr certain friend passing away or something I'm not gonna like toss a joke in there but even songs like Pretty Pippin or I don't know, like it kind of has a turnaround. You're like, this person doesn't recognize himself, but, and then you're like, ah, oh, but then whoever this person is, is sure looking fly with all his yeah, stylish course. threads. Or like, you know, one trick ponies is a bit yeah, of that yeah. in there as well. Yeah, totally. Um, and I know that from other things that I've read about you, that you just kind of like to sit and let the music come out and you don't really have a set way of writing but I was just wondering if you could give us insight into this is purely a selfish question for okay. me right. but I am doing the interview so you just have to deal with it um, uh, Come Again can you tell me a bit about that song because that's probably okay. my favourite one that's well, the one thanks. That I'm glad when I'm listening to it I'm walking down the road I'm like Amazing. I'm, I'm like a tough guy <laughs> that's, a, that's an earworm I've been told and that almost didn't quite even make the record because I was going into the studio and that it's one of those songs that I'm in, in just like like Pretty Pimp and I wrote this mm. the same way. I was going in to work with a new 
uh, engineer, um, and I knew I was going in. I was probably the night before I was going to fly to L.A., and I just wrote Come Again on my banjo, and it came pretty quick. What What do you want to know what it, how it came out? It came well, out pretty I just quick. Wonder, just like uh, you know, it's about the world. It's about the world at a boiling point. It's about um, all kinds of things. I think my my songs are. You know, they're, they're sort of current, you know. They're definitely about how the world is pretty scary. I guess the world's been scary in various ways, but, um, yeah. And I also like the thing about the seasons. There's definitely, mm -hmm. like, um, I'm inspired by uh, Towns Van Zandt. He's got a song where he mentions the seasons. And I definitely uh, took a little inspiration from that. I'm not going to tell you what the song is, but you could figure it out easy. And um, just stuff like that. Cool. But, yeah, it's a banjo strummer. And, uh... Yeah, the girls, the Lucius girls, sang on that. That they uh, sing with Roger Waters. Apparently, they oh, back okay. him up. Um, but yeah, they they I had them singing it, and it, I I wanted them to do sort of like what Leonard Cohen does with female vocals. Everybody sings in unison, but it's very childlike and, but you know, s like somehow skilled, very skilled children. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, one other thing I want to touch on quickly is obviously everybody knows that you are friends with Adam and you used to be in the war on drugs. And obviously they've blown up massive to mm -hmm. sort of like a, they're like they're doing the O2 when they come over to yeah. the UK. Um, when That's not very big. <laughs> well, this I want to touch on. Is there, even if it's like obviously friendly because you're good mates, but is there a bit of a rivalry in terms I of you want to so. progress no, your not career to not where anymore. they are or no, past well, or... Uh, I mean, first of all, I haven't played in the war on drugs in ten years. But Adam's like, uh, it's in my. S it, we're like best friends in spirit, uh, you know. When we're best friends, like you could say in real life, but we don't. I don't get to see him as much, you know. He's got mm. a whole another life now, where he's not in Philly the same way, and he's very insular. Maybe I am in my own way too, but um, he gets really deep in the record making process, which is awesome and uh, it's just a different thing. He's got a big band. He's got like an East Street type of band mm -hmm. in that they can play these arenas and i'll be able to do the same thing and you have as done it for neil right but yeah but i'll be able to do the same thing in my own way but i my my thing is like slower steps up um that's not to say that one day i'll have a massive leap but i uh, i'm definitely inspired by people like nick cave who he's always been a legend mm. um and he could be really gritty he could be all really raw you know but then I don't know when he started playing arenas, but uh, I mean, his shows are like the best shows ever nowadays in the last few years. They've always been great, but now it's even transcending more. And he's like 60 or I don't know how old he is, but he's playing these. So, uh, you know, I'm 38, so I'll, I can definitely uh, catch up to, to that schedule. Of course. I could catch up to that schedule. But yeah. maybe it, who, who knows when I'll but play, I just play some arenas. Like with, with like me and my mates in, in sort of what I do, it's like if they sort of get a step ahead of me i'm like it makes me work harder to try and catch up to them that's uh, kind i of think what everybody I does that with I, I definitely i have plenty of friends that um i admire that i see them doing something and then i yeah but i i've always been a competitive per i'm i'm, I'm in, in my own way even whether it, it's in my own way whether it's crunching number in my own like um some people might be playing to bigger audiences all, all kinds of bands um but I know in my own little niche, I'm st I'm still num I'm number one of course of where I'm yeah. at. And I'm number nobody can like if you want to talk about music. I there's I got this one little niche I can't, you know. And then others are people are above me in other niches, but in w whatever my niche is, I'm 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 in first place. Well, I think you're the only one in it as well, actually. Well, okay. I think okay, which is obviously brilliant. So sweet. Well, well that's no con no contest. No contest. Um, Literally. Now also, <laughs> um, you are a dad. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a little bit about that aspect. Have you found yourself, especially as your your girls are getting a little bit older, doing any sort of really stereotypical dad things? Like, do you have to have a go and for certain things that you'd be like, oh god, I sound like someone's dad now, or like? I love dad jokes. I love uh, I love corny dad jokes in general. I love uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I can't really. I don't know how to answer that question. I'll only because say it again. Well, just like, do you ever find yourself going like, "I'll oh, tidy your room," and then you're like, "Oh, I'm no, exactly I never, like a dad. I Is never." Is there anything? I like never really say dad? tidy your room. <laughs> I never like, say that. <laughs> yeah, no. just wondered if you ever I, a um, stereotypical. Yeah, I mean, old I, man I just dad. sing goofy songs, or I do dad things like I swing, swing them around, and you know, I don't, I don't really just enforce, cool try not to enforce rules, but once in a while, uh, 
once in a while they have to clean the whole house from top to bottom, but that's it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, do they get po- pocket money for that or what? No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> but you could, you know, you do realize that's the thing that used to happen to me. Well, like chores for pocket money. Yeah, I'm not a, a strict dad. I just, but I'm in, inspired by Mrs. Hannigan from a uh, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And um, before we move on to just the last little thing that I need to do with you, um, I just wondered if there's any sort of British bands that you're keeping an eye on that you've sort of discovered Carrots. recently or well yeah or anything really man name me some British bands that Ooh. that um, you like uh, that you might have heard of or ones yeah you need to go and well I g- hopefully that I heard of or you can tell me that too but you just asked me which ones I like so I can't I don't even know who's out I, I get I'm, I'm in I go in and out of a bubble where I listen to mostly um, old music I can't you you can Tell me who who is British that's new that I I'll probably like them. But uh, as far as new music uh, or current music, I p- love people like uh, Grouper and uh, Steve Gunn, and who who are both American. Mm. And Courtney Barnett is Australian. Uh, sure, that's nepotism, but that was um, <laughs> but that was like I was wanting. You know, I was a fan of her. There's so many people. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna space out. Honestly, there's so much. There's a lot of great current music right now, but I'm trying to think of who's British. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, me too. Now, actually, now you said that. I Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is good that's British? I don't even Uh-oh. know. We, we just scrapped that, shall we? <laughs> no, <laughs> no keep it. Show. I've keep got it. the show, keep and I don't even know. <laughs> keep it. <laughs> Probably some of your people, Molly, as well. I can't even remember. Yeah. All right, we'll move on from that. Uh, so, um, Kurt, what I want to do now uh, is something that we do with every guest on the show. Right? It's like a little competition. I'm going to ask you four questions okay. that I will be asking all the guests on the show this week. I just want you to answer them as you see fit. It's called Best Guest. Okay. Uh, I'll be comparing you just on these answers alone at the end of the show today, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, question number one. As an adult, um, when was the last time you were told off? When was the last time I was told off? The me- uh, pr- a, a memorable time was my my last album, Believe Him Going Down, the mastering engineer's assistant who basically does all the hard work where I make a million changes and I emailed him and he just kind of said one sentence that just shot me down hard and I sank because he was just like I can't believe that your project is he's like no I had no idea I was supposed to get this done in fact I can't believe your project has been keeping me from all the other work that I have to do and I was like oh (laughs) my heart sank because I was so burnt out but he, he I deserved it and uh that's I'm that's bad with the en- <laughs> with mastering because it's kind of like the final stages of making a record. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, question number two: Have you received uh, either a weird piece of advice or a new skill recently? I, I, I'll give you an example. So this morning, uh, when I was preparing for this interview, I was half watching uh, a Louis Theroux documentary about uh, polyamorous people in like um, polyamorous relationships. And one of them was making pancakes, and she gave him a killer tip on how to make good American pancakes. So, from that, I managed to master how to make good American pancakes this morning. So, mm. have you been given a weird piece of advice from <laughs> someone, or got a new That's skill a or anything like That's that? That's a toughie. Um, no. No. Fine. <laughs> we'll keep it that. I'm glad the question was nine <laughs> times longer than the answer. Uh, <laughs> if people have stayed over at your place... Mm-hmm. And uh, you're in charge of breakfast the next morning. What would you make? Oh, uh, that's easy. I would make over eggs over easy. Um, and if the yolks got overcooked, I would throw them out the window. Mm-hmm. And then I would, um, yeah. And then I, you know, simple things, but they have perfect, perfect simple things like that. You know, put it on toast just right with like, um, I don't know, some. Like s- some sriracha, a swirl of sriracha. That the swirl, swirl. If, the, if the swirl, w- and if the swirl wasn't perfect, I'd throw it out the window. Kurt Viles Gourmet Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a, a Michelin star restaurant that you're yeah. working on in the background. Um, and finally, uh, if you was a TV detective, mm. a bit like the guy that goes away and comes back again from the mountains, yeah. uh, what would your TV detective name be? Um, Squirty Curdy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's no, the just kidding, that's, that's, that's a drink I used to have. Swell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a drink you used to have. Yeah. What, what was it? I don't. Uh, alcohol and uh, every like uh, 
every like uh, every fruit juice under the sun. This was in my twenties so when I reigned supremus. See, I invented one of those. Um, there's a drink over here called Umbongo, mm-hmm. right? And uh, it's like a carton of juice. Mm-hmm. And I would pour some of the juice out, pour some rum in, and yeah. then with a sharpie, just put an R in front of it and give it to people. Wow, rum Bongo. That's, so that's cute. Pretty similar. <laughs> uh, and if you win Best Guest, mm-hmm. Kurt, Squirty Curty, uh, <laughs> you can have anything you like from the imaginary prize cupboard. So what would you like as your prize? I want... Um, I want... Um, I want, I just want the the Misfits box set. That's all I want. <laughs> it's probably obtainable. <laughs> yeah. So. That's yeah. all I want. All right. We're well, they've been, we've been playing. Actually, honestly, I'd rather, I'd rather have uh, the Ramones, uh, like all the Ramones bios. I went to the Ramones, uh, museum in Berlin. Oh, nice. I, 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 the Misfits sound better on the bus crank, but the, it's really between the... Well, the Ramones are actually number one, but uh, uh, the Misfits, they have a box set that's not too dense. Oh, so I'll take that. And right. maybe uh, Johnny Ramones' autobiography, even though he's uh, was a liberal... I mean, uh, a Republican. <laughs> he All still right. ran the band. Nice one. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, and that shocking realization that you've revealed his political... Allegiances to us. Um, <laughs> that's the end of the interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, weirdest way we've ended one of those. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, man, honestly, uh, such a good album and just such a general massive fan of your work. So thanks very much for coming yep. on. Thank Pleasure. you. Cheers, man. Thank Thanks. you.